My name's Topher and I'm an Australian. What I'm about to share with you is, for me, very, very personal. And not even my family really know the extent of, of what I've been through this last two and a half years. But I think the time has come and I think I need to... I need to tell you, because what's happened to me over the last, particularly the last year and a bit, is a warning. In particular, it's a warning for my American friends who right now are having Obamacare shoved down their throats. The last year of my life is a warning against the dangers of socialized medicine. You're being told to accept Obamacare. You're being told that the Canadian healthcare system and the Australian healthcare system are proof of how good a socialized medical system can be. I'm here to tell you otherwise. I've spent all my life, I'm 31 years old, I've spent all my working life so far paying into the Australian healthcare system. And that happens through our income taxes, we have no choice. You have to pay into the Australian medical, the Australian healthcare system. You do that with the promise that when you need medical care, it will be there for you. Well, just over a year ago, that day came, the day that I needed the Australian medical system to be there for me. More than a year later, I'm still waiting. I was diagnosed a bit over a year ago with severe obstructive sleep apnea. What that means is that when I go to sleep, my throat closes over and I stop breathing. Blood oxygen levels dive to, to quite dangerously low levels. And as a result, your body does not do any recovery while you're asleep. It doesn't do any of the repairing and rebuilding that your body is supposed to do. You wake up feeling more exhausted, more fatigued than you did when you went to sleep. All my life I've been fatigued. All my life I've had this issue where I just seem to be tired and falling asleep everywhere. I'd sit down on a couch, I'd be asleep potentially within a couple of minutes. <laughs> yeah, it, it could be embarrassing sometimes, but I always told myself that I was just being weak because everyone says they're tired, everyone says they need more sleep, everyone wishes they could have a sleep in, right? So I just told myself, hey, everyone feels the same way, they're dealing with it, so deal with it. Be a man, grow up, harden up. Well, about two years ago, it began to be quite debilitating. My work suffered tremendously. I started missing some very important deadlines and, and no matter how hard I tried, I couldn't, even if I could stay awake, I couldn't focus. It was like my brain didn't work. I was living in a permanent fog because I just was so tired all the time. My social life for a number of years was close to non-existent. Um, I, would, I would tell friends, I didn't have the heart to tell them what was really going on, so... I would just tell them I was really busy. I had a lot going on, which was also true. But the truth was, I just wanted to go to bed. You know, and I'd, oh, I'm sorry, I couldn't make it. You know, I hope it was a great night, blah, blah, blah. I was crawling into bed, trying to get some sleep because I just needed to shake this fatigue. And um, couldn't bring myself to tell them that that's what was really going on. I didn't want to be weak. I didn't want to be the wind anyway. So... My work, my friendships, my relationships um, suffered and um, here I was always chasing more and more sleep but I didn't realize that sleep was actually the problem and that it was when I was asleep that I was getting no oxygen and that was why my body was, was so fatigued. So it was this endless cycle, I'd try and get more sleep and then I'd wake up feeling awful and then I'd try and get more sleep and then I'd wake up feeling even worse. So, <clears throat> when I finally got the diagnosis, it was just a massive relief. I cannot even begin to describe what a relief it was to know, A, I'm not just being a whinger, and B, there's something we can do about it. Because in my case, it was very, very obvious why this obstructive sleep apnea was such an issue for me. I have very enlarged tonsils. So large that they quite literally block off my throat as soon as I fall asleep and, and my throat muscles relax. So, all I need is a tonsillectomy. That's it. Pull my tonsils out, and there's a decent chance that if, even if I'm not completely cured, my condition will be radically improved. Now you'd think, under Australia's socialised healthcare system that's supposed to be one of the world's best, a system into which I've been paying my income taxes all my life, you'd think they'd look at that and go, hey, yeah, we can do that, that's easy. Tonsillectomy, that's not a big deal. I was diagnosed over a year ago. When I was diagnosed, they put me onto a waiting list. This is my letter informing me of my 
being added to that list. The letter is dated the 30th of July 2012. It's now September 2013, and I still have my tonsils. This is the reality of socialised medicine. Waiting 12 to 18 months, they still can't give me a date by the way. Waiting 12 to 18 months to get a simple piece of surgery that could fix a problem that is really damaging your quality of life. If you think insurance companies can be hard to deal with, if you think they can be bastards sometimes, try dealing with bureaucrats. Try having your physical, mental, emotional, relational, financial well-being be dependent on a bureaucrat to decide what they're going to categorize your surgery as and how much urgency they're going to put on it and whether they're going to hurry up and get you in there or whether they're going to keep putting you to the back of the queue because they don't think it's really all that important. Try it sometime and see how much you like bureaucrats at the end of that process. I'm not asking for something for free here. I want to be clear about that. Socialized medicine is not free. I've been paying into it all my life through my income taxes. I have paid for this operation multiple times over already. Still can't get it. Still can't get the care that I've already paid for. So what are my options? Well, I could pay three and a half thousand dollars to get the surgery done privately. But if that's my best option, then why do we have a socialized healthcare system in the first place? And why have I been forced to pay into a social healthcare system that isn't there for me now that I actually need care? If I'm just gonna to have to go to the private system to get the care that I need when I finally need care, who is the socialized healthcare system actually helping? Who's getting the money that's being paid into it? Where, who's getting the care? I've been paying for it all my life. Now that I need it, not getting it. I've also been told by people that I should go and get private health insurance. Oh, it's your fault. If you'd just gotten private health insurance, this would have been covered. Well, I ask again. Yes, I could go and buy private health insurance, but if that's the best way to go when you actually want to get looked after, why have I been forced through my taxes to pay an extraordinary amount of money in my working life so far into a social health care system that by the sounds of it isn't doing very much? That's the reality of social health care. Higher taxes and a long wait. That's what I've been given. You know, this CPAP machine here, this is a, a breathing apparatus, okay? This is what is used by people with severe obstructive sleep apnea to breathe every single night. Sexy, isn't it? Really, really attractive. I have put this on and worn it all night, every night, for more than a year. But you know what? This wasn't provided by the Australian healthcare system. This is a friend's machine. I happen to have a friend who also has sleep apnea and he had an old machine that he wasn't using anymore. If it weren't for him, I can't afford to buy this. These are thousands of dollars. The Australian government weren't gonna give me one even though I've spent thousands upon thousands of dollars in taxes into the social healthcare system. They weren't gonna provide one for me. This keeps me breathing at night. This is the only reason why I have a better quality of life now than I did before I got diagnosed. And the Australian government had nothing whatsoever to do with it. You're being told in America that you would be better off going to a more socialized healthcare system. I am living proof that that's not true. I would be much better off if all of this had happened to me in America than right here. Why? Because in America, you were never promised that they would look after you in the first place. Which means that if you wanted medical care, you knew that you were going to have to pay for it privately. Most people then went and bought private health care insurance of varying levels of cover according to their needs and their own particular inclinations. If I'd been in America, earning the money that I was earning and not having to pay the taxes and being promised that I'd be looked after if I got sick, I would have been buying private health cover like most Americans. And when I got diagnosed with severe obstructive sleep apnea that could be fixed with a nice routine little piece of surgery that gets done every day, I would have had the surgery probably within a matter of a few weeks. And this saga, this chapter of my life, the last three years that are supposed to be some of the best of your life, but for me have been destroyed by fatigue, would have been very, very different.
This is the reality of socialised healthcare. Long waits. Bureaucrats. Paying money for healthcare that you never get. That's your future on Obamacare. You've been warned.